ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. How's everybody doing this afternoon? Everybody, yeah, yeah? Everybody feeling uh, absolutely brilliant, uh, uh, on their toes, uh, ab uh, uh, fantastic health, top of the game, Any, huh? I got w only one fabricator in Toronto, uh, two. <laughs> no, I think you must be. Yeah. Yeah, this endocrine thing, this whole hormone thing, this whole body-shaped diet, this issue of, of people's shapes, uh, how they appear, Confirmations and uh, signs and signals, uh, they're extremely uh, accurate. Uh, yeah, thank you. Extremely uh, uh, effective tool for determining what you need physiologically, nutritionally, hormonally, what you need uh, nutritionally. It's like a window to the physical soul, if you will, the physical part, and maybe the, the spiritual soul to a degree, because Obviously, we have to nourish ourselves physically to be you know, strong spiritually, as you know, the temple parable. So uh, while this is sweeping the country in interest, and any time I tell any talk show host, TV or radio, about the concept of the body-shaped diet, how I can tell by your shape, by your, uh, the, you know, your physical features on your nails, by the, uh, the, the, the look of your uh, skin, the turgor of the skin, the thickness or thinness, or even I tell some talk show hosts, I can even tell by the tone of the voice what, what hormones are lacking, what hormone gland is, is in bad shape. Everybody wants to know about it. Uh, and, and so just so you know that this kind of started in Canada at this very show, uh, congratulations to you Canadians because you tend to harass me. <laughs> I was doing a, a lecture about 12 years ago about the body shapes and of course one time I was also with Judy Gray and we were doing the nutritional deficiency and all the signs on the face and the eyes and the tongue and the nails and the hair and, uh, different textures and, and, uh, and uh, imbalances that you can see just looking at people. And, and, and then uh, I started to lecture about the actual shape, an apple-shaped person, a pear, a watermelon, a carrot, a rectangular head versus round head, triangular type shaped head, people with, with uh, fine facial features, people with coarse facial features, hair loss from the outer third of the eyebrow, for instance, coarse hair versus thin, wispy hair. We were talking about all that. I was trying to educate you on what your hormone type was. I did two or three lectures. Finally, the third time, the third year, you came up to me and you said, so when are you going to write the book? I said to the guy, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a, um, a terminal harassment a, uh, agent, TSA, right? <laughs> I said to him, do you know how difficult it is to write a book about uh, body types and shapes for all the human beings and get it correct? Oh my God. But then I discovered chaga, right? You ever hear of chaga? Yeah. Then I discovered a few herbs and tonics and potions. I don't know what I did, but I cranked myself up. I got in front of the computer and the notepad and I got the crazy thing done, the body shape diet. It's a book on uh, how you can tell by a person's figure fat distribution, uh, the, as I mentioned, the texture of the skin, the hair, the bore of the hair, the, uh, uh, um, the overall shape of the torso, the shape and, you know, the, 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 the look of the abdomen, if you will, the derriere, the sides of the hips. I look at everything. Of course, I'm the doctor. I can get away with that. <laughs> and, and, and I can determine 
square, honest to God, right spot on, exactly what hormone glands are in the weakest condition. Because the body shape diet is about the, uh, where if, you, if, you, uh, if you're that shape, if you're that type, it means that you're weak in that department. So if someone's a thyroid type by their shape and by their signs, they're, they're, they're going to need support of that gland. If they're an adrenal type, then we need to strengthen primarily that because some people are actually primary thyroid types, primary adrenal types. If it's a pituitary type, then we focus on the pituitary and the brain and the hypothalamus as the uh, uh, agent for charge, needing a charge. Some people are combination types, so oftentimes we have to uh, focus on, on the thyroid and the adrenal, and some people, you gotta throw the kitchen sink at them. I get the, yes, I find them, the occasional pituitary, thyroid, adrenal, gonad type. Everything is caput. And, and so, and why would we do this? I mean, you know, you have things like uh, hor like vitamins, uh, they're important, minerals, amino acids, everybody knows the importance uh, of nutrition, of a vegan diet now very popular. Some people think it's the way to go. We'll kind of question whether it's the total way to go hormonally. Uh, you know, the diet uh, we, we focus on, macrobiotic, high protein, whatever it is. But does anybody focus on uh, the endocrine system as the premier uh, uh, substance of our therapy. Not very often, not very often. Okay, you do have bioidentical hormones, you do have the occasional uh, uh, doctor that looks at your T4, your T3, and so forth, reverse, TV, three, reverse T3 if they're really shrewd, TSH perhaps, but that's not what it's all about. You'll find in the body shape diet that we quote the investigators from the 1920s to date saying that the endocrine system is a unit. Larson said in his book, Why We Are What We Are, it's a complete unit, everything works together. Not an isolated thing. So first we have to understand before, you, I know everyone wants to know, okay, well, what's my type? Am I, look at me doctor, look at my hands, look at me. And I'm happy to do that. But it's more important to understand what it really is. So we have to do a, a, a survey of the endocrine system and the hormone system because we're talking about the hormone type. And the hormone type is based on the endocrine glands. The endocrine glands are glands of secretion. They're exocrine glands. They, they produce substance and dump it into the bloodstream. Why would it do that? Why is it? Because according to Fritz Kahn and others, they're chemical messengers it's making. Pomerantz says that they're chemical drugs. These hormones, are, these substances of the endocrine system, they're not like vitamins and minerals, ladies and gentlemen. Vitamins and minerals are kind of essential for health. Some aren't so essential. They're all helpful. Uh, some are produced even in, by gut flora. They're pretty essential, but you're not going to die if you can't mount a vitamin response. Case history. A woman was in the Norwich earthquake zone and a, uh, the bridge, she was okay, she was in her car, the bridge started shaking and it smashed and smashed and smashed. She wasn't under the bridge, she's 40 years old, she dies of a heart attack. Watching what's happening. She died of what? Fear. And fear is the fight or flight. Did she have, what, what organ system didn't she have enough? She may have had enough vitamins. She didn't have enough adrenal cortex. Her fear overcame her cortical secretions and she checked out. There, these are truly drugs, these endocrine secretions that are produced in our bodies. And they act in a different way. They act where? Where do they act? On the cell nucleus. Inside the nuclear material. Is vitamin D a, a, a vitamin or is it a hormone? It's it should be called D, hormone D, isn't, shouldn't it? 
as I mentioned in Nutrition Test for Better Health in, in this, this book, because it operates by altering the genes, the chromosomes. And the same with all the other endocrine secretions from insulin to cortisol to progesterone to testosterone to estrogen, they all do it the same way to the parathyroid hormones. It doesn't matter. Thymic hormones. So, how influential? When you think of an organ that if you don't have it, you're checking out. Uh, what two organs, you don't want to have any excessive damage to that organ, you could die. What do we think of? Immune system, but did I hear the heart? Okay, heart. The lungs, okay, you can get by with a third of a lung. The liver. We think, I mean, no, cirrhosis or, or a drug toxicity to the liver. Oh, my God, hepatitis. But how much liver can we have and still be alive? What percent? 10% is correct. 2% perhaps it could regenerate if we could give them herbs. But then we have the kidneys too, right? Somebody said kidneys. How much kidney? 20%. We can function. And if not, dialysis, right? In the 1930s, no one had any cortisone, prednisone, whatever. But they were experimenting and they saw somebody with an adrenal tumor, right? Human being. They cut out, 40, uh, they cut out about 80% of one gland. So they had maybe one and a half adrenals left. The guy died on the table. And they kept doing surgeries. No cortisone, no prednisone to replace it. Whenever they cut out a whole adrenal gland, for instance, the person checked out. When they cut 60%, 50% of the adrenal tissue out of dogs, the dogs could no longer walk. They had to crawl on their abdomens. Their coping mechanism was knocked out. So the adrenal glands are more critical than even the supercritical organs. Obviously, we know what happens when someone's thyroid is cut out. I mean, a woman goes through that and she's, the whole system gets uh, 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 wreaked to havoc. And then if you have your women who have ovaries removed, uh, weight gained, they lose their femininity, the libido, the, the sexuality, everything's changed. The hair. Uh, how important, how powerful in the 1930s, they like to do experiments then on people. They don't do that now, right? We don't do things like experimental chemotherapy or experimental surgery. No, never. Experimental vaccines? No. <laughs> It's still being done. But then it was a little more gross. So they took a man, a eunuch, you know, his testicles removed. And of course, you become a bit feminine with that. But the anatomy, some of it still works. Uh, and so what happened was they actually took the man and sewed an ovary into his abdominal fat. They took a live ovary, sewed it in. And the man turned into a functional female with functional breasts, functional genitalia, almost you know, uh, female genitalia, female hair distribution, and became voluptuous. Uh, I'm telling you, those hormones, they, if they're deficient, they affect your shape. And that's why I'm giving the example because I could look at somebody and say, ah, an ovarian type or a gonadal male type with, your testosterone must be, you know, like totally out. Oh, I had it measured and they can't even measure much. Or, you know, it's a pattern, you'll see it. Or they talk you about all the other problems they've got. And then if you have a low thyroid, uh, the pattern is, is visible. Adrenals too. So, so we can actually interdict all of the problems early by seeing your type and eliminating the risks that are consequent of endocrine deficiency. And endocrine deficiency is a disaster. It's a very common. Why would endocrine deficiency or imbalance or uh, besides surgery, removal of the glands, why is there an epidemic of the glands being out of balance? What was that? The meat, what was that again? It was the xenoestrogens, the, the bisphenols, the, the plasticizers, the soy, even though, though it's, it's a xenoestrogen. The xenoestrogen is correct, is a, a major issue. 
the drugs that are in the waterways, many are estrogenic. What's, that's one big one. What's another reason that the endocrine system is disabled? Because it really is. And we have to take care. The stress is the biggest one. Boy, oh boy, does the stress disable and destroy the immune system and the endocrine system simultaneously. Uh, investigators in the 1920s and 30s, Larson and others who I quote in the book, make it really clear that there's nothing worse than a pessimist as far as the adrenal glands are concerned. Or grief. And for the thyroid and the adrenals, rage and anger destroy them. And God knows how many things you can do to destroy the ovaries and the gonads. You know, self-pity is one big one. And certainly uh, stress uh, is another one. And, and then, now, we know the emotions are devastating. That's two. What's the third one? Don't ever get angry, by the way. Figure out something to do. Sit down and grind your tooth or something. <laughs> Suck your thumb. Anything but anger. I'll have to treat you with like megadose endocrine therapy. It's so destructive. The second most destructive is grief and then pessimism. Yeah. Okay, so what else is destroying the endocrine systems and stopping them from functioning? We did something in the lab. We did uh, estimate the cortisol level in the hair of stressed people. We found out the more stressed people, the more cortisol. Dumping into the hair. That's a very interesting study that they're doing here in Canada, their most sophisticated lab in the world right here in your, your area. Uh, unbelievable that uh, just like you see when there's overload of uh, copper or overload of aluminum or something, the, the body trying to get rid of it. Even it's trying to get rid of this excess cortisol, which will suppress the immune system and induce carcinoma down the road, suppress the bone marrow. Uh, so, so the stress, but there's another super acidic stress that people do that destroys the glands, especially destroying the adrenal glands. Sugar. Sugar, da 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 da. I'd rather have the honey. And I'm sure if you did the test on the raw honey of the Quran and the Bible, you wouldn't see this destructive effect. But when you eat refined cane sugar, it destroys the glands. The biggest uh, 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 consequence is in the adrenals, where it at first causes atrophy, and then, which means the cell growth stops, and then it induces fungal overgrowth, and then it causes necrosis, which is cell death, and then the adrenal glands become completely damaged. Because at that point, they can't defend themselves. And what happens? What happens? Who has this ache right here? Who has it? Me on oh, my crazy schedule. Yeah. Means the adrenal glands are uh, infected usually by tuberculosis. In Canada and the United States, on autopsy, it has been shown in the 60s that one of three humans upon death uh, has active tubercular infection in the adrenal glands. And the adrenal infection began as a disease that was in 1850 first uh, discovered by what man? Starts with A, Addison, right? Who, uh, who was looking at the, uh, uh, prostration, asthenia, weakness, collapse, and death, which occurred in 1850. What also was brought into the nation here in 1850, 1840 on a large scale? Anybody? How about refined sugar? The sugar industry expanded to the Americas by giving packets of refined sugar to the population in the cities to get them addicted to the sugar. And shortly thereafter, a population that ate butter, bacon, whatever they ate, you know, uh, fatty meats and beef and vegetables and garden produce and had one cup of sugar stored away in the cupboard uh, for a year, uh, started to develop adrenal collapse. And then the, the, and by the time the 1920s and 30s rolled around, what else big machinery besides the high refined sugar machinery, what else was refined and adulterated? 
the, 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 the white flour, the roller mill in 1910. And that was the end of the um, uh, North American civilization. Remember the old daguerreotype photographs of the people of strong stock? You remember that? The ancestors? That was pre-sugar, pre-white flour, pre-roller mill, pre-refined sugar criminals. That was pre-vaccination. Uh, now, another, antibiotics. Because they cause the destruction of the good flora and allow the fungal overgrowth. Nowadays, I also categorize uh, the biggest uh, uh, oppression to the endocrines is fungal infection. This is a consequence of what I've built here for you today. The fungus pushes real hard on the thyroid. And how many of you have thyroid problems? And you want to go take T3 and Synthroid, but your problem is fungus. That's the primary issue. Or somebody with hyperthyroidism, and they want to go get, they don't know what to do. They go to the doctor, they don't know what to do, so they burn them with radiation or thiouracil or some, who knows, something insane. Destroy the gland, but it's not a thyroid problem. Hyperthyroidism is infection. It was known in the 1930s. Why do you think the eyes are bugging out? Parasites is the number one thing. Fungus is number two. When I told you that the endocrine system's a unit, people, that's what I'm hoping, just one thing you take away today. Larson, who was an endocrine surgeon, gave up the surgery and said we were insane to cut out the, I quote him in there, insane, virtually, to cut out individual glands. Because this is a unit, it works together, it's a symphony. Let me ask you, if the guys, can, the conductors working with the symphonic orchestra, and the person with the violin is a little off tune, does he take a hook and yank him off stage? <laughs> he just tries to massage him back into, into tune. We have to do that with the endocrine system. So with hyperthyroidism, we don't treat the thyroid. We treat the fungus. We treat the heavy metals. We treat the bisphenols, the xenobiot uh, xenotoxins, estrogens. We purge them. We, we treat the adrenals. If it's a man, we give something to support the gonads and leave the thyroid alone. You know, there's an old uh, uh, osteopathic uh, dictum. And Andrew Taylor Still and my professors, as you know, I love, many of you may know, I love using my hands as well as my mouth, right? Uh, and the hands, of course, are for treating the spine and treating the, the cranial area and treating the sacrum and uh, assessing. But we were taught that if the head is sick, if the second cervical is cranked and there's neck pain, if the shoulder's out of, out of kilter, don't start hammering the shoulder or the neck. Start with the sacrum and work your way up. And the same is true with the endocrine. If the adrenals are completely damaged, we have to work with other things. We have to build up the ovaries and the, and the testicles. We have to we'll build up the adrenals too. Uh, we have to take a look at the thyroid, see what we can do with that. So there's all this interaction. More important than the thyroid with weak adrenals is the thymus. See? In fact, with weak adrenals, you can give too much thyroid because adrenal people are already exhausted. They're already depleted. Their nervous systems are already half-baked. How do you turn an active child that so-called has ADD into a, into a, uh, a gaga land, you know, a, a brain, you know, just a, uh, how do you turn them into a nothing? You give them amphetamines, Ritalin. It's an amphetamine derivative. And, and you deplete their cortisol and you deplete their glucocorticoids to such a degree that they go to zombie land. So with, when we have low adrenal, we want, to, uh, we want to not push the thyroid too hard. With thyroid supplements, we could deplete the adrenals. That interaction. So the final stress now seems to be, I mean, there are others, Fukushima. As you know, the, the natural cures for radiation. Fukushima and uh, other Chernobyl, uh, radiation therapy, induce 
a weakness of the immune system and increase the mutations of the fungi, increase the fungal load, and also cause great damage to the thyroid apparatus, as well as the ovarian apparatus and the gonadal apparatus. So that's another um, burden that has been uh, imposed upon us by the criminal cabal that runs the nuclear industry that paid no heed to everybody and there are warnings about all these wars. Most of Fukushima was used to produce depleted uranium which uh, uh, Japan uh, then uh, exported to uh, the war machine. And now I think you mentioned that the depleted uranium level in the people's hair in Iraq is so high it's ruined the whole country. And, and then it's so bad that the honey from Yemen you can't import now. It's high uranium levels from the bees visiting the plants that absorb the uranium. This is criminal. It's not criminal, it's, it's murder. Well, murder is God's business to deal with that. All we can do is try to build ourselves up, yeah? If we can do that, then we can... You know what I always say? If you could get your endocrine system to work real well, put it in balance, and take the body shape diet supplements for your issue. Uh, you can avoid these fatalities, perhaps, and sudden deaths because the heart disease is due to endocrine collapse. Uh, low thyroid is a carcinogen. Low adrenal is asthma, bronchitis, tuberculosis, allergies, irritable bowel, spastic colon. Low gonads increases the risk for cancers in the, in the pelvis and premature aging and heart disease. So I figure if I take enough body shape diet, I'll probably outlive the dirty rats, and then maybe we can do something good on the earth. Add that to some cleaning out with some oregano, right? Clean out the fungus, the oil of oregano, the juice of oregano, the oregaresp would be great to bomb it out. Back it up with some healthy bacteria. And finally, we should correct the vitamin deficiencies because the endocrine glands are high metabolic rate uh, organs and they desperately need vitamins and minerals. How many of you have I seen, I looked at your tongue and you have scalloped tongue and bald tongue? Yeah, and how many of you are taking B-complex pills? Huh? The ones that have the deficiency are taking the pills. No wonder. Well, body's saying to you, what are you doing? You're feeding me coal tar and hexane-based vitamins. I'm surprised you don't see that in the hair. And then all I can do is try to get rid of them, so I'm going to flush all that out and you end up deficient. Or it binds to the receptor site in the cell and you can't absorb the vitamin. As you know, the urine changes color when you take these. So you have to understand just two things from this lecture. One, work with the endocrine system as a unit. Don't worry and pull out your hair about the synthroid. Build the whole system. And then Get the nutrients you need from food and make sure the supplement you take is not a phony. You don't, the coal tar is a toxin to the adrenal glands. The hexane-based vitamins are toxins. They should not be consumed, no more. We need to go more to the whole foods. You have the Purely Pack now, you have the Purely Min, you have the, uh, all these things. And then, last but not least, I have created something that gave me a lot of energy for this talk. And something simple is called my hormone shake. Yeah. I got my female hormone shake, which I didn't take. And I probably didn't do all right with that. And then the male hormone shake, where a wild baobab, your purely min, your, your berry extract, your chaga syrup, your wild oregano honey, all the things. Because if you read the book, you're going to find out that the foods that are rich in hormones are largely animal foods, berries, and flowers and pollen. Uh, and so, according to our investigation in this book, if you feed into your hormone system with other hormones, from the plant matter, the mushrooms also, from the animal food, not the vegan diet. Vegan diet is a disaster for the endocrine system. Do your vegan diet for six months, then come back to me on something more balanced. We, we, how do we fix the hormone system? It's a whole symphony, uh, a cacophony of material, uh, of, of needs, not uh, just vegetables. We have to feed it hormones, so we, we have to give grass-fed beef, which is rich in hormones. We give eggs, we give butter, we give cheese as a medicine. Huh? 
Sounds interesting. We give poultry with the skin on. If we make a roast, we drink the drippings. I'm, not, I'm probably going to chase some people away or something with this one. <laughs> but you have to read the book. Now, this is nothing against our vegans. Well, they have to do what they have to do. Um, we give royal jelly. Why am I doing this? We give maca. We give uh, bee pollen. We give raw honey. Why? What's this? We're giving hormones. You're deficient in hormones. You have to eat them to get the health. It's, in, it's, it's already published. Berries, for those who uh, want to go more of a vegetable route, are, have pre-hormones and they can be effective. Chaga is brilliant. It's loaded with sterols. And the exact sterols that the body uses to make cholesterol. Do you know, ladies and gentlemen, that people are doing diets with no cholesterol and they're taking cholesterol-lowering drugs? Is it kind of insane? A Finnish study showed that when you take a cholesterol-lowering drug, you have a 600% increase in violent death. You kill yourself. You kill somebody. You crash your car. Why, if you strip the cholesterol out, or low-fat diet, you know, whatever, and cholesterol-lowering drug, uh, 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 why would you go crazy? The brain, it's all lined with cholesterol moieties in lecithin and all different phospholipids and cholesterols and the spinal cord and the peripheral nerves and the muscles and every cell in the body. So when you take chaga, which is full of these sterols, as is birch bark, you're feeding the membranes. Is why we see such as this, one guy with a ruptured intervertebral disc and I told him uh, how to avoid the surgery was his request. And I gave him the Chago Power Drops, the Betchew Birch Drops, the Chaga uh, Capsules, the Oil of Oregano. He came back to me with a 95% healing of the ruptured intervertebral disc, no surgery, because I was feeding him hormones and pre-hormones and feeding him cell wall components. You understand? It's the cell membrane. Lanosterol, betulin, betulinic acid, yeah? And how is a birch tree? Is it a membrane? That wrapping around that, you're taking that substance when you take a chaga. It digests the birch. So this is kind of the story, what I've been able to do with people with endocrine imbalances, find the type, fix it. And we have a little bit of time, apparently, until they chase us. So we're going to try to find out what type you are, yeah? And the main reason you came. <laughs> the type, you look at the head first. Is the head square or rectangular? Is the, is the head, uh, is there furrowing of the brow even coming down? Is there swelling under the eyes? Is the eye, are the eyelids swollen? We look to see if there's the, the sag. You know, the women would hate to, to reveal. The droop. Now. I've been told if I keep doing it, I'll end up looking like you. But the drag down are the corners of the mouth, the corners of the eyes, and the shrinkage of the upper lip compared to the lower lip, coarse facial features, thick coarse, square off at the chin, lines here. What type is that? Loss of the outer third of the uh, eyebrow, coarse, thick hair, thyroid type, ladies and gentlemen. Going down further, uh, you, don't, you oftentimes don't see the clavicles. The abdomen is, uh, is an issue. Weight is put on the front of the abdomen, isn't it? On the front of the thighs, but on the sides, is there any weight with the thyroid type? It's flat, and the derriere is flat. That's a thyroid. You could take a yardstick and slide it down the back, and you wouldn't hit anything in some of these people. <laughs> some of them are so messed up, you could take a couple of tree, it looks like a couple of tree stumps stuck into the behind. There's nothing there, just legs. Now then, if you go to the next type, then, the, then that's apple shape. And then you go to the next type, and you're looking at adrenal. Not so coarse, receding chin, lower teeth crowded, uh, not the eyebrow problem, hair more thin and wispy, and uh, finer facial features. You see the clavicles. They don't have the tire around the abdomen like the thyroid people, but they could have a pouch, right? The little pouch, and the, with that and the receding chin, we're suspicious of, of adrenals. 
And then the, what, what's the difference between the two? The thyroid person will crave starch. The adrenal person tends to crave sugar and chocolate and salt, right? So, so now you're getting a little closer. The thyroid person is cold. They wear sweaters and socks at night. They're cold in the center of their body. Cold hands and feet too. Don't put your feet on me, you know. Um, and, but the adrenal person is cold, clammy hands. Feet that sweat. See the difference. It's male and female. You'll see it both ways. The pituitary type is different on all of this. They have the shorter fingers or long. Either one. Very long hands, long palm, or short hands. Uh, round face, fat pat at the back of the head, fat pat on the lateral wrist, blob under the arm. You know the blob, right? It comes at a 45 degree angle. It's a real big one. They want a less blob, it's thyroid, the one that's in the center. And then they've got this funny fat pad on the lateral ankle, whereas the thyroid person, they've just got swollen legs, swollen feet, swollen hands. Difference, yeah? Round head pituitary, rectangular square head thyroid. Combination type you might be. Now, we got a little bit of an idea of what's going on. Uh, we might suspect with our sugar craving and our chocolate cravings and our, and our energy not being good, we're more adrenal. There is a difference. Who's really dead in the morning? Is that the adrenal one or the thyroid one? Who's then the life of the party? It's the adrenal that's active at night. I mean, it's the thyroid that's active at night, people. They're dead in the morning. As T3 gets more biologically active, they get better at night. Who's going to nosedive in the afternoon? Take the dip as the adrenal. Uh, who's dead by 5 o'clock? If, if, if it's dead meat, they've got to go to sleep by 7 that's the adrenals are gone, finished. And then you find out some of these people are pounding the sugar and the sweets, so you know, you just, just got to get it fixed. All right, so now, if you want a sort of pathognomonic medical uh, or a clincher of your type, then you look at the hands. Dominant eye over, looking at, now, you know, I go through all this. I'm running out of time. I do it all. And then afterwards, you know what happens to me? They all come up and say, hey, doctor, what's my type? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. That's what I'm here for. Anyway, you look, and you see that the first finger is shorter than the ring. Yeah? Anybody see that? First finger shorter than the ring on both hands. If you have that, you're going to have a thyroid type. First finger shorter than the ring, miss? Yeah, we're pulling her out. Uh, so more thyroid, but some adrenal. Put the hands down. Now put them up. Now put them up. I can see better. First hand shorter, shorter, shorter. Almost the same length, so there's difference. Almost the same length. Longer on one hand. Adrenal uh, thyroid, shorter. Uh, let's see. I didn't see this lady here behind you. Yeah. Okay, come up here. Come up here. My, my experimental lady here. Yeah, this lady in the front row. Yeah, come up. Because there's combination type, you, you need to see. See the combination type? The hands are about even, actually, about even there. And then here, about even, really about even. So that's like adrenal thyroid. You have thyroid? Okay, so we'll switch you to thyroid adrenal. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, is it? Okay, we'll talk. So that's how you do it. Uh, you use that, and then you take in the book and you study the tests. You go through all the quizzes, Maybe you have a pituitary component, huh? A little bit of adrenal there. But where's the pituitary person? See, that's where the tests come in. You circle your pituitary uh, questions, thyroid questions, adrenal, then look at the diagram, look at your hands. Gentlemen here with pituitary, right here. Small head for the size, hips uh, going a little bit, and that's the pear shape. Pituitary's pear, what's the, let's go over it again. Pituitary's pear, thyroid is apple and watermelon. Some are not heavy. They have a, a watermelon-like torso like me, and they have a, a love handles on the back. Yeah? That's still, a, a, and then they put the weight. If they get the weight, they put it on right here. And then which one is more carrot-shaped with the pouch? Adrenal. That's the adrenal. Which one is the one that has the cold, clammy hands and feet? Adrenal. Good, people. Excellent. And the, and the endocrine system should we be uh, isolating it with isolated uh, 
uh, uh, bioidentical hormones or should we be feeding it like food things like royal jelly and bee pollen and uh, berry extracts and chaga? Which way should we go? Throw it all at him, he says. <laughs> all right. If you did at least the, hey, if you did at least the food, you'd fill the gaps of the pre-hormones. All right, everybody. That's it. We're going upstairs now. Yeah.